Welcome. If you're looking for an online therapist uh, to treat agoraphobia, then I invite you to look at my website and learn more about the online psychotherapy service that I offer um, over Skype. So I help people overcome anxiety disorders like agoraphobia um, online using Skype. So Skype is a very effective way of allowing you to see each other. And that's really important for online psychotherapy. You need to see each other, but you don't need to be in the same room to do that. Um, but you do need to be able to see each other for uh, good communication, um, and that will make it much more effective for you. If you're suffering from agoraphobia, then you know just how important it is to be able to get access to an online therapist because it's so difficult to uh, travel to see a therapist in, in person. So if you're interested in online therapy for your agoraphobia, then please feel free to contact me. Tell me more about yourself and what you've tried so far, um, and I will be happy to answer your questions. If you would like to get started with me on your recovery process, then do please let me know what days and times work for you, and then we can go ahead and schedule a Skype therapy session. So the approach that I uh, teach online for, for overcoming agoraphobia is called Mindfulness-Based Exposure Therapy. It's a very effective way of neutralizing those anxiety reactions uh, that feed the agoraphobia. Basically, we design a series of challenges, exposure challenges, uh, in increasing difficulty, starting very simply with uh, an exposure challenge that just is on the um, borderline uh, of being able to uh, tolerate the anxiety. And then we move on to progressively harder challenges. So starting with the first exposure challenge on your list, we then set out to do a mindfulness-based training with that particular exposure challenge. So each day, you will spend some time rehearsing for that challenge. That means that we imagine doing the challenge and then watch for any anxiety reactions and any anxiety thoughts that may get triggered. When you find those uh, particular habitual reactions, you then start working with them using mindfulness. So this means learning how to hold those mental objects, the anxiety, the thought, in your awareness, in your conscious awareness, and learning how to keep them there without identifying with them and without reacting to them and without allowing them to uh, propagate more reactivity, which is typically what happens. The, the typical situation is that when anxiety is triggered in the mind, that then that then sets off a whole sequence of uh, other reactions, mostly in the form of reactive thoughts. Um, so, we want to overcome this uh, blind habit, which is what it is, because that 
a sequence of reactions feeds the anxiety. So we want to be able to see those reactions very clearly and neutralize them through our awareness, not getting uh, identified with those thought reactions, not becoming uh, lost in that stream of thought reactions, uh, not feeding the anxiety. So the more that you see of the internal psychological process that causes your anxiety, the, the more choice you have, the freer you become. So it's very, very important to cultivate this mindful awareness of uh, the specific emotions and thoughts that get triggered when you imagine uh, doing that particular challenge. So developing consciousness is the best way to overcome those habits. Uh, the second thing that's really useful in neutralizing anxiety habits involves developing a relationship based on friendliness and compassion with those uh, thoughts and with the anxiety, of course, that's fueling those thoughts. When you develop a friendly relationship, you make yourself much bigger than the thought. When you become reactive, when you identify with thoughts, you lose perspective and you become much smaller, which is part of the problem. This is a phenomenon that we call reactive contraction. Uh, and it's a very important part of the process that happens in the mind that creates anxiety. We contract into the emotion and into its thoughts and into its beliefs and so on. When you develop friendliness, you effectively counteract this contraction because the nature of friendliness is that it ignites an expansion response in the mind. You feel bigger when you are friendly. You feel smaller when you are uh, reacting with aversion or hatred or dislike for something. So we develop friendliness towards our emotions and our thoughts we start to respond to them in a way that helps them heal. This is called the response of compassion, which is a vital part of being mindful. Being mindful is more than just being aware, but it is also being aware of how to respond to the experiences in the present moment in a way that leads to healing or to greater well-being or greater happiness. So it has this active quality of response to your experience. And in the case of anxiety, what that anxiety needs more than anything else is that response of compassion. It needs to connect to that bigger part of yourself that we call your true self, your higher self, that is free from anxiety, that's free from reactivity. So it needs to connect with that in order to heal itself. The biggest problem that sustains anxiety is that the anxiety reaction becomes dissociated from your true self. It becomes isolated and being in that isolated condition it really can't change itself, it can't heal. It's only when you bring it in to your true self, when you embrace it fully, that it can start that process of healing. 
And when you do this uh, consistently, the anxiety heals very quickly. So this is part of what we'll be doing in our rehearsal meditations before we actually do the exposure challenge. So we play through the challenge, we look for the anxiety and the thoughts, we learn to see them as objects and not identify with them and not react to them, and then we learn to respond with compassion in a way that helps that anxiety subside and heal. And then we play through the uh, scene again until we get to that place where we feel completely confident in doing that particular challenge. Then is the time to do the exposure challenge. Then, then we actually go and walk outside or uh, go to a shop or a mall or some uh, other uh, exposure challenge that's on your list. So we test it out. We put it into action. And that's a very important part of the mindfulness uh, approach. It's about putting things into action, learning how to be more present and more mindful and less reactive um, in th uh, the particular situations that you find yourself in. So that's how we do it. That's mindfulness-based exposure therapy. And it works extremely well. I will teach you how to do this during our sessions together. And if you practice between sessions every day, taking on one of your uh, particular challenges on that list and doing the rehearsal training and meditation before you do that challenge in the way that I've just described, then you will see rapid improvements. Uh, and I expect most of my uh, clients who come to me to, to see significant improvements within uh, the first three or four sessions. It really does not take that long to uh, change those anxiety habits as long as you approach them in the right way and that you train with them in this very uh, careful uh, and conscious manner using mindfulness. So if you'd like to get started with me, um, please go to my website and go to the contact page and send me an email and tell me more about yourself your particular situation and the kind of help that you are looking for and we can schedule a Skype therapy session uh, at a time that works for you. Thank you.